This is very interesting. Uh, so, former, we've got a former pastor here. So you were actually trying to convert Muslims at one time. Yes, sir. Now you're listening to us here, listening to the Deen Show. You were watching the Deen Show before? Oh, also? man, since 2007 or 2008. Since 2007? Yes, sir. Yeah, tell us a little about that. Well, I was doing campus ministry at Penn State. I was a campus pastor at Penn State. So that's where I met a lot of people from other international students. A lot of them were practicing Muslims. So at that point, uh, you know, I was trying to share my faith in Christ. We always came across Trinitarian issues, things like that. But I remember it was an atheist that actually said to me years ago, where in, I was saying to them that Jesus was God at the time. They said, well, where is that a requirement in the Bible to obtain salvation? What if you don't believe that Jesus is God? Do you go to hell? And I could not find the answer in the Bible ever since. And I can never get a satisfactory answer. That's always in the back of my mind. But the deity of Christ was never a salvation issue to begin with. But Jesus never claims to be God anyway, in actuality, when you're honest about what the scriptures have to say. So the process of turning to Islam has been quite a process. It's not an overnight thing. No. And the key to it as a Christian is to read the Bible not as one book, but as 66 separate books with different intentions by the authors. And when you see that, it becomes very clear what the truth is. This is really, really deep. I'm so glad you approached me. We're just giving a presentation. We're doing a live Dean show, and he came up and said, I used to be a pastor. I used to watch the Dean show. And Alhamdulillah, now he's Muslim. What advice do you have for others? A lot of times, even people in that position, they have a position, they're out the pulpit, and many, they're like, okay, they know a lot of the stuff that's being taught, preached and taught, that they don't have texts there that are in the original or any original manuscript you don't have original manuscript so a lot of people end up compromising you actually didn't do that you actually you know went deeper you know I'm sure you asked the creator alone for guidance right yes of course so always. What, what was it what advice do you give for other pastors other people out there who they know they go to seminary school and they're seeing Matthew didn't write Matthew Luke didn't write Luke they're seeing certain contradictions but they believe in God they believe that there has to be there, that, that, that there's an ultimate truth like you did. What do you advice do you have for them? Well, it's interesting to say that because it's true that the, the Bible are actually anonymous letters. That's true. But that's not what my concern was. My concern is more the theology. And so when you see the words of Christ compared to Paul, I like to say to Christians today, they follow Pollyanity, not really Christianity. Because what Jesus teaches is actually a different message than Paul. Paul says that he, he curses two people by name. Jesus says to forgive people and he says on the cross father forgive them they know not what they do but like I said the Apostle Paul he curses people Jesus says that not one jot or diddle tittle will remain will go away from the law but the Apostle Paul he's against the eating restrictions and he says the one who follows the Torah is cursed even though Psalms 19 says that God reveals his his life through the Torah and all of Psalms 119 says that the Torah, the law, gives you life. So how can someone who is a believing Jew, Paul, say that he's against the Torah and you're cursed for that? And Jesus agrees with the Old Testament. And if you find Muhammad, you will find Jesus anyway. Because Muhammad leads you to Jesus. And Jesus does give life, yes. But Muhammad, it's the, it's the message. They point to Allah. They point to one God. Jesus says, worship Allah, worship God. Muhammad says the same. Abraham says the same. I just want to share that. Just separate Paul from Jesus and the truth to become clear. That's the one more thing, and we're going to have to have you on to talk deeper about these things. How much easier is it now when you're communicating to humanity the simple message of pure monotheism? Because if people can understand that, that's what Islam is about, worshiping the Creator, not the creation. That's instead, right. Instead of trying to you know, convince people about Trinity, God being a man, you know, part of God, fully God, half God, whatever, you know, Trinity. How much easier is it now? I, I don't know, I think it's hard because like a lot of, with, with Christians you're dealing with, in America at least as a whole. I mean just the message, conveying the message, the guidance is in the hands of God Almighty Allah. But you know, just explaining this simple message now, I, of Tawheed, of oh, pure monotheism. Yeah, Tawheed, monotheism. I find it easier with non-Christians actually. Uh, it seems like more people are accepting of one God because it's simple and yeah. most Americans find that simple. Christians have a lot of presuppositions you have to contend with, so you really have to take more time with them and yeah. patience and things like that. But I always try to point to what Jesus says. Go to one God. What does Abraham do? Go to one God. And then sometimes the Christians will bring up race. I'll say, well, Job, the oldest book in the Torah is actually the book of Job, not Genesis. And Job was a Gentile, not a Jew. Because it's not based on race, it's based on the message. So the message is to worship one God. You know, like the Shema says, Shema Yisrael et Ehad, God is one. 
And so that's what Islam teaches, Tawheed, that God is one. And I feel like I got born again when I finally realized that God is one. That's it. La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. There's nothing worthy of worship except the creator of the heavens earth, Allah. Simple. That's what you have to do. Simple. Just worship on God and be obedient. Do your best. Just do your best to be obedient and worship on God. And give him thanks because that's faith. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Here with former pastor, say your name again? Brad. It's former pastor Brad here on the Dean Show. We look forward to having you back for a real episode. God willing, inshallah. Thank inshallah. You, sir. Thank you, sir. Muhammad.